Welcome back to Hour Number 2 of the Gary Sutton Show on WSBA on a Monday morning. It is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, 2015, as we celebrate uh, the life of a man who uh, looked at all people and said, hey, everybody ought to be trying to do pretty well here in this country. We've got to have the same rules for everybody, the same opportunities as much as possible, but we also should have the same expectations of people and not because of the color of their skin, because of the content of their character. With us this morning is a man who I know marched uh, with some of the Dr. King uh, marches. Uh, he is a longtime member of the Project 21 Black Leadership Network. He's a professional prison chaplain, a facilitator with Prison Fellowship Ministries. He's also ordained and endorsed as an institutional chaplain with the American Baptist Churches USA. He's served as a correctional chaplain at Moshannon Valley Correctional Center in Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania. And he's also been the author of a book as well called America's Dynamic Duo, or Morality and Freedom, America's Dynamic Duo, and co-authored Virtue Advice, A Fascinating Journey into Spiritual Transformation with Roxanne Flower. Uh, he is... Uh, one of my favorite guests here, he's the Reverend Stephen Kraft, and he joins us here on the Gary Sutton Show. Reverend Kraft, always an honor to have you on, sir. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Gary. How was your weekend, brother? Uh, it was great. I, I I couldn't have had a much better weekend at all. Uh, you know, I was I was listening. I was at church yesterday. I, I go to the Salvation Army Church here in New York, Pennsylvania. All right. And I uh, I was listening to a sermon yesterday by. Um, a good friend of mine named James Harris, who was talking about Martin Luther King Jr. And one of the things that he talked about, the theme that he talked about, was from a speech that uh, Martin Luther King Jr. gave called the drum major speech. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, where he said, you know, a lot of us have the drum major mentality or the syndrome where, you know, we always want to be out in front. And he said that can be good. It can be also bad. Uh, but but he talked about uh, that the whole way through. And I thought it was just an interesting thing that Martin Luther King was a drum major. But at the end of this speech, he said, listen, I don't want people to remember me because, you know, I got all these awards. I don't want them to remember me because of the Nobel Peace Prize or any of this stuff. I want them to remember me when my day comes as a guy that tried to help out his fellow man a little bit. And it was, I'm paraphrasing a bit when I say that, Reverend. But, uh, you know, I, it really struck me that this idea of a drum major, because he was a drum major for civil rights, but he did it in a way that, combined his spirituality and his religion with with the present day problems that people had back then, which were unnoticed by a lot of people until TV came out and we started to see the fire hoses, the dogs, the the, the way people were treated, and, uh, and America kind of woke up. Yes, yes, that's so true. And now in the area, in the era in which we live, we need more than one drum major. We all, black, white, and every color in between, Gary, need to be drum majors for that which is right, for that which is true. We don't have leaders today across the spectrum that understand and recognize the importance of what Dr. King shared. In fact, a show that I just came off of, uh, the host asked me, did I think that if Martin Luther King was alive and with us today, would he be recognized as a leader or would he be marginalized? And I told the host that in my own humble opinion, I think that based on what we see, he would be marginalized and basically ridiculed as an Uncle Tom and a sellout. We need a serious course course correction, and we need a serious attitude adjustment in America, in the white, black, Hispanic community, so that we begin to understand and recognize that it's not about, oh, woe is me, uh, this oppressor, oppressed mentality, but rather understand and recognize that God has blessed us with a great country, and we're losing our country because we are so divided and so fragmented. You know, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I remember you, I thought I remember you saying that you marched with Dr. King at one point in time. Yes, well, I didn't know him personally. Right, you but said I was that. In some of the marches back in the mid '60s, uh, I was in my 20s, so I had already come of age. And when he would come to New York City, there was always a division between him and his counterpart of of uh, Malcolm X. And I had mentioned to you, I believe, before. Being from New York City, I would always attend those marches in Harlem, and my head would be with Malcolm X, but my heart would be with Dr. King. And as a result, I was very fragmented with this dichotomy in my own heart and right. mind. 
because I knew in my heart what Dr. King was saying, being a drum major for reconciliation and righteousness was the truth. But at the same time, in my flesh, I was angry. I was unforgiven. I was bitter. I had a lot of hatred and resentment for Caucasians because I thought that they were my problem. But the truth of the matter was my problem originated, was staring me in the mirror, originated in my own heart. How do you, I mean, when you think about that, I want to I want want to get inside that a little bit. You, you talked about having that attitude at that time. Um, where had that come from? How had you gotten that? And, and I'm asking this without having any preconceived notes to what the answer is. Uh, and then how did you turn that around? I mean, where did that kind of turn around for you? Okay, well, I'll tell you where it came from. Uh, I was born October 10th, 1973. I'm 71 years old. The Bible says that we're born in sin. We don't want to hear that word anymore, but it's the truth. And if we are honest with ourselves and look at ourselves and look within ourselves, we will quickly see that we are, if we're human, <laughs> we have a sin problem, but we don't want to hear that. Jesus made it clear, Gary, when he said, for with, from within, out of the heart of man, proceeds evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit. Lewitness and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile a man. That was my problem. I was born a sinner, just like every other human being, right. whether we were going to hear that or not. It's the truth. So I didn't, it wasn't a big deal for me to point the finger and blame other people for my issues. You know, it, it, was a, it wasn't a stretch to do that. But I had to recognize and realize after I got caught up in drugs for years and found myself on the bottom that no white man tied me down and put a needle in my arm. I did that to me. No white man caused me to go out and commit a crime. I did that by my own volition and free will. So I had to realize that the only way I was going to get free from my madness was to change. And that's when I gave my life back to the Lord got back in church, and began to grow from the inside wow. out because I recognized that my problems were within me, not outside of me with some other race of people. You know, I think one of the biggest things right now, you hear a lot of people that will quote Martin Luther King Jr. today, and I will be one of them. We, we play his quotes here. I, I, I think he's one of the most, the, the greatest speaker I ever heard, frankly. I, I mean, my, in my lifetime, I was a kid during that time, but I was fascinated by what Martin Luther King was doing back then, Martin Luther King Jr. And, and I thought that what he was doing was right back then. And there were a lot of people in this country who were talking about him. I thought that he was right on the right track. And I thought, man, go on, go on. Uh, yet at the same time, I also had the chance to visit the South during that time. Not everybody got a chance to do that. And I don't know if I told you this last time, but I, I saw the separate facilities of the South. I saw uh, people not being allowed to go into restaurants or having sides up. And we were going down to visit my uncle in Beaufort, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I asked my father, I said, Dad, you know, why wouldn't everybody just be in the same place? And he said, because there's a lot of ignorant people still in the world, Sub. Mm -hmm. And that was his answer to me. Uh, so when, when people looked back then, there was real discrimination going on. There was real stuff going on. Right. I'm not saying it doesn't even exist today because I would be foolish to say that. And yet, at the same time, a lot of people... Don't want to think that way. They don't want to think in terms of segregation. They're thinking about everybody as being a brother. Uh, and yet I see today in the Gallup poll, satisfaction with race relations is down 25 points to a mere 30% this country. Now, again, I don't know who they polled on this. But when the number goes down like that, you got to say, man, there's something wrong with the country. Didn't we get to a point here where we're, we're getting by that now? And yet we've seen a lot of people... Then we saw people like you marching and other people who said, there's some real problems that we got to bring them to the, to the consciousness of America. And yet now we say, okay, there's problems, but because of those problems in, a, in an individual place, does that mean there's problems everywhere in the country still? And that seems to be falling kind of deaf on a lot of people right now. And a lot of people are saying, put that away because that doesn't have a place in today's America. Your thoughts? Well, number one, the problem again, is more, I think I told you this on a previous show, the tap root of the problem, Gary, for your listeners, is moral and spiritual. Moral and spiritual issues are eternal issues. You cannot solve moral and spiritual issues with political and social and economic solutions. It will not work. It cannot work. When we have a spiritual problem, we need a spiritual solution. As you just heard me read that passage of Scripture, 
out of the heart comes these evils. The thing about racism, whether it's black racism against white folks or whether it's white racism against black folks, has a spiritual and internal root that comes from the heart. Unforgiveness, anger, hatred, bitterness, resentment, all of these pride, foolishness, all black supremacy, white supremacy, all of these ideas have spiritual roots. And until we begin as a people to come together, as Dr. King did when in his ministry as a civil rights leader, and say, hey, guys, we need to get by all this. There is no longer black uh, uh, colored restrooms and white restrooms. We've gotten past that, but that's a bygone era. Now what we must do is realize and and, and correctly analyze the problem that the problem at its taproot is moral and spiritual. And until we come at the problem that way, that's why I'm a minister just like Dr. King was. We were even in the same denomination, the American Baptist Church. Right. We have to get beyond now all this race baiting and understand and recognize that we are brothers. How do, we, how do we get there? I mean, how do we? You and I have talked about some different things, and I know one of the things you said you have to get voices in places like shows like this, uh, where people are going to hear them in the urban areas and so forth. But and even in the suburban, I mean, anywhere. I mean, you really need these. But but why? You know, how do we do it? We 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 talk about the negativity. We talk about the stuff that's battered away at the moral fabric of this country. We're talking with Reverend Stephen Lewis Kraft this morning. How do we get beyond that? Why, how, do, how do we make some kind of renaissance here in this country, get back on the right path? Well, again, I have an old saying, Gary, I might have mentioned to you whenever we talked last. I give it the uh, alphabetic uh, SWSWSW, and what that stands for is some will, some won't, so what? Yeah. We're never going to have 100% agreement on these issues. I understand that, yeah. On racism, whether it's white racism, black racism, or polka dot racism, is a spiritual problem. It's a fallacy and an illusion to believe that we're going to get rid of racism because racism is a spiritual problem. It's uh, evil, and we'll never get beyond that. But what we must do as individual people is begin to understand the taproot and the origin of racism then we can get by it uh, as individual people by understanding and recognizing that you can't legislate racism away. I can, as a black person, legislate racism out of somebody's heart. Neither can white people legislate racism out of black people's hearts. It's nope. a spiritual issue. So therefore, what we must do, I think I'd mentioned it to you in days gone by, what we must do is sit down at the table, as Dr. King said, of brotherhood, brotherhood and right. realize what he says. Where do we go from here? Do we go into more chaos, as we see happening now in our communities, or do we go into a, the beloved community, which says that we are Americans. We're not black Americans or white Americans or Hispanic Americans. We are Americans. We have to preserve this great legacy in this great country that the Lord has given us. And because if we don't, we're all going to go down, as Dr. King says, we will either hang together or we'll hang separately because a house divided against itself cannot stand. Yeah. We are supposed to be the United States of America, one nation under God, individable, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We've got to get back to that, Gary. Reverend Crabb, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to come back and, and talk about more about how we can get more brotherhood on Martin Luther King Jr. Day here with Reverend Stephen Lewis Kraft. Remember, the Project 21 Black Leadership Network will be right back with him. Welcome back to the Gary Sutton Show on WSBA with Reverend Stephen Lewis Kraft, a longtime member of the Project 21 Black Leadership Network and uh, uh, one of my most sought-after guests, i got to tell you. I, I just uh, love talking with him because it, you, don't, you, know, you just don't mince words at all. But before we get uh, Reverend Kraft back in here, I'd like to play just a little bit from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, and uh, we're going to listen it together here with uh, Reverend Kraft. I have a dream that one day... This nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content. 
content of that character. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain. And the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed in all flesh. Shall see it today. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. back in 1963 in his speech, the I Have a Dream speech in Washington, uh, with Reverend uh, Stephen Lewis Kraft. Uh, when you hear those words even today, Reverend Kraft, what hits you? What hits me is what hit me before when you and I spoke. The reason why those words have such power is because they're words of spirit. Yes. They're spiritual words. That speech came straight out the Bible, and you know that. Yep. That's why it has power. That's what we're lacking today, uh, Gary. That's what we're lacking in our nation today. We talk a lot of political flim-flam. We talk a lot of economical flim-flam. But the problem at its root is spiritual and moral. And we need leaders. We need innovators. We need servant leaders that are going to take that same spirit of Dr. King today, that are going to be drum majors for righteousness, that are going to speak truth to power, and that are self-evident truths that all human beings are created by their creator equal, and that the content of our character, which is a spiritual issue, will prevail over this nonsensical racial color of skin. And you know what's amazing? You, 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 you said it. I mean, his whole power, I think, was that it stood on a moral base. Thank you. A respect for law, yet a lack of respect for those laws which were discriminatory, and thus he marched, and thus he went to jail, and thus he had other people with him doing that, uh, and it was the right thing to do. Uh, Today, we have people who want to divorce any kind of moral basis, it seems, from the political side. In other words, they want to have the political side say they're doing the same thing as Dr. King, and yet... Without the moral base, it's a lie. It's you got it. Happened. It's a lie, and that's w- and you're, you you analyze it correctly, Gary. That's what they're trying to do, but it cannot be done, and that's why it's not working. One of the things that, as you were talking just before the break, and you said about we have to come out with a voice, we have to start to uh, get back to the idea of talking about things in a moral sense, and and what is our moral fabric of the country? I think each of us as citizens need to do that uh, and recognize what America was based on initially, but we need to hear it as a regular drumbeat, I think, also from our representatives who want to think they're the drum majors, but they're not marching on their own. They're marching at our behest. We're talking about Congress. We're talking about a president. They need to put truth to power to that as well, do they not? Yes, but the problem is we have a wicked government, and the reason why we have a wicked government is because we elected them yep. and re-elected them, and we continue doing the same thing when the definition of insanity is to continue to do the same thing, yet expecting a different result. The people that are running our government now are a reflection of those of us, of a government of, by, and for the people. You're right. So what we need to do is do, again, what the Bible says, that the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2, when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. For righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Our answers are in the Bible. But as long as we don't want to hear that because of political correctness, we'll never fix the problem, and it'll continue to get worse. Reverend Kraft, uh, I... I always pine for more time with you on a given day, but I will get that the next time. I love meeting with you on a regular basis. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your thoughts here on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Final thought for people before you leave. Final thought is, hey, Gary, we have work to do. You know I'm ready and willing. If we can find ways to, to, to get me more involved, Let's let's shake, rattle, and roll. And I think that's what all of us ought to be saying. Can we each of us get more involved in, in making uh, the atmosphere in this country better? I think it's a possibility. Reverend Kraft, to our next time, I, I say goodbye and have a wonderful day. God bless you, man. Bye-bye, Gary. You too. Take care. Reverend Stephen Lewis Kraft with us on the Gary Sutton Show, a member of the Project 21 Black Leadership Network. 